Welcome back. So, we got a comment situation coming in. I'm going to snapshot that for thumbnail real quick because, yeah, that's going to be thumbnail. Um, so, yeah, we have a green comet coming. It's not going to hit Earth, so don't be all doomsday. Everyone's going to die. Oh, my God. So, let's not do that. We don't have time for that. Link to this will be in the description box below. Nonetheless, it might turn into some merch, maybe. Who knows? Anyways, many exciting astronomy events to look forward to in 2023 but the buzz that's already going around is a rare celestial visitor that will bring a spark to the winter sky um comet c2022 e3 ztf has been growing brighter in the night sky in recent weeks and experts say it may be worth stepping outside to look for through the start of February. If C2022 E3 has ever passed through the solar system before, it would be would have been last seen in the sky more than 10,000 years ago, said John uh, Giorgini, a senior analyst of NASA's Jet Propulsion, uh, Propulsion Laboratory. Celestial sluice in the Zwinky was it ZTF in Southern California were the first to detect the comet on March 2nd of 2022 and the object had been growing brighter since its discovery. The latest obs observations suggest that it could become visible to the unaided eye as it dashes past the Earth in the coming weeks. Um, it's not going to be quite the spectacle as Comet Neowise was in 2020 but it's still an awesome opportunity to make a personal connection with an icy visible visitor from the distant outer solar system. The comet will look like a fuzzy star with a green tint rather than a bright ball of light with a dramatic tail stretching across the night sky. However, even at its brightest, there's a chance that folks will still need a telescope to see it. Uh, comets are notoriously unpredictable. But if this one continues at its current trend and brightness, it will be easier to spot with binoculars, and it is possible it could become visible to the unaided sky under uh, unaided eye under dark, dark skies, particularly with the new moon that actually that we're going towards. Um, only people in northern hemisphere will be able to see it, though. But looking. For it may require losing sleep as it will only appear above the horizon during the second part of the night. Looking for the fake comet without a telescope also requires being in an area far from light pollution. So like remote, remote areas like in the Rockies or something like that. Um, also got to keep an eye on the weather because if it's cloudy you're not going to see shit. Okay. Um, January 12th stargazers should look for the comet in the northeastern sky. In the hours before daybreak, between the bright stars Articus, well, Ar Arcturus, and Vega, the comet will rise above the horizon around one in the morning local time, but will be easier to find late in the night and as it appear higher above the horizon. The celestial Vega bond will drift across the night sky throughout January, eventually meeting up in the constellation Ursa Minor also known as the Little Dipper. The constellation will serve as a reference point, making it easier to spot the comet. <coughs> so this is what we're looking at for a time frame. Can't zoom in for anything. Rude. Um, but yeah, that's going through January, basically. Um, Comet ZTF will fly past Earth on February 1st, but at its closest approach, it will be more than 26 million miles away from the planet. Um, 100 times further away than the moon, so yeah, this is not going to hit Earth. Um, if it's your first try to locate a comet, try on uh, February 10th when the comet appears extremely close to Mars. Um, <laughs> And taking pictures of the night sky with an exposure of 20 to 30 seconds will allow photographers to capture images of the comet, even if they cannot see it with the naked eye. 
Anyone trying to take a snapshot of the comet with long exposure photography should use a tripod to keep the camera steady. Um, it will start to fade away during the second half of February as it moves further away from the Earth and the Sun, making it more difficult to find even with a telescope. Um, and yeah, that's basically that. Um, there's a possibility this might be an Oort cloud object, actually. Like, it has probably has origins within the Oort cloud. Um, so that's going to be something there. And this is not the big, big event coming up. There, we got a couple major solar, solar eclipses coming up. First one is in April. And that's like in seven hemisphere equator area, and then the annular eclipse over the U.S. in October. Um, but yeah, I'll see what I could do with this going forward, weather permitting. I'll see about getting some footage of it if I can. If I'm not able to, it's gonna be hard to do it with the current tech I have. But I'll see what I could do. Um, but yeah, as that's about it. Stay safe out there. See you in the next video. Bye.